or can you take us a little through the process of putting it together and getting these six extraordinary individuals on camera? Yeah, um, it started with a brilliant film that I saw, which is called The Fog of War by Aaron Morris, which, which kind of, I was stunned after I saw the film because when you see someone who was in power who speaks from the innermost uh, sanctum of decision making uh, place and he was there while taking those decisions, I said, this is amazing because someone can get that close with people at that rank, it can be an amazing world. So this was the first thing when I saw, and it was always in my head. And then when I started to think about getting all the heads of Shinbet, I, I tried to ask myself who would be the best, the best one to uh, penetrate this inner sanctum. So I, I did the research about all of them, and I decided to go with Amir Yalom, who is the last one who says basically we win the war, we win the, the battle, we lose the war. And um, I explained to him what I wanted to do to him. And I told him about the whole war. And he saw the story. He said to me, wow, this is an amazing film. Uh, I, I recommend everybody in the military academy to see for the war. If you are going to do I'm with you, so I said, please, please, can you call this and this and tell him that I'm going to come to speak to him, and he did that, and this is how it started. It was a long voyage to get them for me, but at the end, they all agreed. How well are these men known in Israel? Are they personalities? Do they become columnists? So how do we, does the Israeli, average Israeli, know their names? Well, the average Israeli, I mean, the one that do know, yeah, the ones that are in power, definitely the ones that are in power now, definitely they know their names and they are very well respected in Israel. Their opinion are uh, well respected, so they are known. But you know, the more you go, the more you go further down the timeline, they are less known. So, I mean, Yuval Diski, for example, was the last one, the youngest one. Uh, said something about the current administration in Israel and it was uh, opening uh, in all the newspaper. They are very well respected in Israel. Can you talk about some of the footage? I was especially fascinated by, I have to say, the footage of the bombs and whatever. I mean, is that private footage that was being taken, that news footage? Some of the bomb, well, some of them was recreated in a, in a CGI. Some of it, uh, but very, very precisely. I mean, it, it's really uh, based on the real area terrain. Some of them are real footage. Um, archive research in this film lasted, I think, around two years. And I saw, I saw, well, I don't, I don't want to exaggerate, but I saw hundreds of hours of material from all over the world. I mean, not only from the Israeli television, but from BBC, NBC, APTN, AP, all. And it was very, very meticulous uh, process to really choose what is going to be inside the world of the film as an archive. And finally, when you were starting to talk to each of the six, were there any ground rules, any things you could not do, or they said, listen, beforehand, we're not going to talk about this? The old man didn't want to speak about 300 land uh, at the first time that I spoke to him. And I said, okay, I respected that. And then I did the whole round of interviews with the five, the five that weren't in office. Yuval Diski, the last one, was still in office. He was still in office as head of Shinbet before I interviewed him. So I approached first the five, and the, before the second interview with him, I came to him and I said, Abraham, listen, the 300 line is going to be in the movie, whether you like it or not. They will tell the story, and it's your chance for the first time ever to speak about what happened that night from your point of view. The, everybody heard about that night from many, many points of view. Never they heard about your point of view. I did do that. And he said, okay, I will see. And you see that moment in the, in the movie, at that interview, you know, I interviewed him, and interviewed him, it was a long interview, and then I asked the question, what happened that night? And you see him, you see this moment where he says, I don't remember, and then he decides to go inside that, and the minute that he started to speak about that night, I was in. So this was one of them, just this kind of... Uh, <laughs>
victories. Yeah. <laughs> or the, 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 you didn't want to speak, so... Yeah. Let me ask some questions for you. Yes, right here. Well, what that, was the uh, reaction to the film in Israel? What's been the reaction to the film in Israel? Oh, I'm sure we have mics today, sir. The film was shown just briefly two times at the Jerusalem Film Festival. We didn't want to create any buzz around it, uh, so we kept it a very, very low key. For me, it was just to show it for the first time for the gatekeepers. The response in the audience and from the gatekeepers was very, very strong. Very, very strong. But what, one, one of the things that really uh, made me happy is that after the screening, three people with Yarmulka, with Kippa settlers, came to me and they said, listen, the whole stuff, first time that we are going to go home now and think very, very hard about where we are and what we do we do here and, and whether our presence in where we live is hindering the state of Israel. So this was one of the chilly moments for me, but to answer your question, it was not shown yet in Israel. Okay. Yes, Jim, if you wait for the microphone, sorry, jumped the gun before. First of all, thank you. Um, uh, a couple of questions about things that I didn't see in the film that I wondered if any of them talked about. Uh, one of them is the wall and the result of the wall. And the second is, in a secular society, where are the women in your film? Are there no women that are at this level or have any opinions about this? To answer your first question, well, what you see in the film is around, I would say, 2%, 2.5% of the uh, interviews that I did with them. I have around 65 to 70 hours of interviews on camera and around 30 hours of, uh, of uh, research material which I did with them. So it's definitely, there's a lot more outside. And there was a lot, big talk about also the, the wall, basically what how the wall started. And I can speak about it a lot. They, they tell the story of the wall. And second of all, for your second question, I wanted the head of the Shibet. I didn't want anybody else to speak. Of course, I think that there are women who are working in the organization, but I wanted all the heads of Shibet to speak. No one else, not the deputy head of Shibet, or not the second deputy, or the platoon leader, just the heads, because they have kind of impact, or uh, that nobody can argue, so this is why there is no woman. I'm not <laughs> in the film. All the way back there. Yeah. I'll hold on for the mic. Thank you for a fascinating film. Um, I just wanted to understand the difference between Mossad and Shinbear. Uh, and secondly, uh, was there ever any suspicion that, um, that within Shouldn't that there may have been sympathy for uh, the assassination of Rabin? Well, <laughs> okay, Mossad and Shibet, basically, I will try to do it generally compared to the USA. Mossad is CIA, is, it deals outside of Israel. All, all his operations, COVID operations, is outside of Israel. Shibet, I wouldn't compare it to the FBI because they don't deal with crimes, but Shinbet is more the intelligence which deals inside Israel, espionage, Palestinian uh, and occupied territories. So this is basically, I hope, it's much more, but I hope that answers your question. Um, look, I heard about the conspiracy theory, uh, but I didn't find anything which resembles that. I mean, we have the tape. You know, you have the tape of Igal Amir shooting Rabin in the back. Um, what I can tell you that, uh, and that goes into very, very specific details, there was one of the heads of the um, Jewish underground during that time who incited a lot against Rabin, who was an operative of the Shimbet. And this is what caused a lot of those kind of theory because they said you activated him as an agent, and that's why those conspiracy theory came. But it's, for me, it's very, very obvious what happened there. Uh, this gentleman right here. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask about the sound design in the archival footage. Uh, I could be wrong, but it sounded like 
especially in the older material, that some of it was created or generated by you. And I wanted to ask you why it was important to give that extra dimension to the archival material. Well, it depends on which archival material you mean, because there's a lot of archive in the movie, and I can't know that it's, there's a lot of difference. Of course, we kind of uh, recreated sound in follies for some of the, but it's, it, we never created dialogues. I mean, it's only just to make it more uh, seen or sound more authentic, because a lot of this black and white material comes without sounds or comes with very weird uh, uh, narration with music. So. We kind of wanted to take to give it more authentic, uh, but we didn't create dialogues in that. In that, that means we didn't put words into that. Uh, this, sorry, what was the second one? No, that, that was it, just the, the the effects, the Foley and sound effects. I have a very good sound designer. I like to work with him a lot because he challenges he challenges me all the time. So he's, he did a lot of fiction. He comes from fiction, and it's always a battle with the sound design. You know, put it up, put it down. So. <laughs> This gentleman here on the end. Uh, just wanted to say I like the film. Very much, very impressed by uh, by this. It shows you if you, like in the fog of war, if you talk to a few of the right people, you could really say a lot. I just got back from ten days in Israel. I was struck by what what I saw in this film. And that is this huge gulf between, let's say, the reality-based perceptions of people who are professionals in security and the political rhetoric. Is this? Do you think that's accurate? And also, is the current Shin Bet still in the same position as these former chiefs of Shin Bet were? In other words, taking them, let's say, a more moderate position in the face of inflammatory rhetoric from, uh, from politicians? Look, you are absolutely right. Uh, politicians in Israel, from my point of view, um, I will try to be uh, gentle. Uh, <laughs> Politicians in Israel, definitely the current administration works from motives which I cannot understand. And uh, I think that the heads of the Shin Bet can't understand as well. Uh, where do you want to take the Israel? I think this was the most important part for me why to do this movie. Where do you see Israel in 20 years time from now? And uh, I will answer the other question by what of, one of them said to me. He said, you are coming to heads of Shin Bet. You are asking six heads of Shin Bet. But come to the thousand and thousand operatives of the Shin Bet. Some of them were keeper, some of them are settlers, some of them seculars. And they, will, they will, will all give you the same answer that we as head of Shin Bet give you, and, and the head of department, head of section in Shin Bet will give you. The Shin Bet, because of his constant catch on the ground, because he understands the Palestinian conflict from the bottom, from the sewerage in the refugee camps, understand that nothing good can come to the state of Israel from maintaining this conflict. And the sooner we will solve this conflict, the better it will be. Regrettably, I don't see any kind of now definitely willing to do that in the current administration in Israel, regrettably. And I think that it worries them a lot, worries them a lot, it worries me a lot, definitely. That's the reason. How do people join the Shin Bet? Do they sign up for it? Are they drafted out of the military? What's the process for someone becoming an operative? You have to sign up for that. And then you're going through an extensive uh, questioning, an extensive uh, physical, an extensive training time, which after that decide if they want you or don't want you as an operative in the Shin Bet. This, the Shin Bet deals with a lot of things. It deals with security also, the Prime Minister's security or the security of all the Jewish establishment and the Israeli establishment around the world is under the, under the Shin Bet. Uh, so consulates and embassies? Consulates, embassies, all of that is the airline, all of that done by the Shin Bet. One, one of the, Avi Dichter, the, the one in the movie, said that if it was 9-11 uh, was done, uh, in, if the Shin Bet would be uh, responsible for the security of the airlines, no 9-11. So, uh, no 9-11 would happen because they wouldn't let anybody come into the airplane. There's always in the airplane, in the airplane, someone from the Shin Bet who is taking care of this kind of stuff. So they're doing a lot of things. They're dealing with, with the Jewish, as you saw in the film, the Jewish terrorists. They're dealing with uh, espionage. They're dealing with uh, subversive activity. A lot of work. Yes, back there in the middle. Thank you.
Thank you very, very much for an incredibly, extraordinarily provocative uh, film. I'd like to ask you, I, I saw that there was uh, CoPro was up there, and they, you obviously got a lot of archival footage from Israeli sources. Um, I wondered about the cooperation, whether you faced any difficulties in making the film, what your sources of funding were. Um, also, if there are uh, plans now to release the film in Israel, what they are, and in general, what the role of documentary film is in forming uh, public opinion in Israel at this point. You have a really important uh, documentary festival there as well. Thank you very much. I, since I have a sh shorter memory, though, so I, mean, <laughs> I, will, I will try to answer them. Uh, most of the money to the film came from Europe. Uh, it was funded by European. Uh, we did that in Pogba and in pitching forums in, 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 in Europe. Uh, France, mainly, was the main uh, body that gave a lot of money to us, and for that I thank them. A lot of the work of the CGI was done in France because of that. Uh, Israelis also, Israel also gave money to that. Uh, it will be, it will, it, it will go to uh, theatrical distribution in Israel soon. I understood that Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, announced an hour ago, I didn't see it yet, that there's going to be an election in Israel soon. So uh, I hope to release that before. Before the election in Israel, I have no political uh, <laughs> agenda by releasing that before that, but I hope to. Re I, we, I'm aiming to release that soon in Israel. I think it's important that the Israeli public will see it, will reflect on that, and will see what's going on there. And uh, yes, what was the last question that I didn't answer? Sorry. How, how uh, Israelis respond to documentary film, whether documentary is an important factor in the political circle in Look, I will answer that. Part of the, 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 I'm very worried about what's going on in Israel, not right now, in all aspects. Uh, newspapers are being closed. Sheldon Edelson is, is, I don't know if you know who he is. is one we know. Of, okay. <laughs> he's, giving, he's giving free newspaper in Israel, which basically almost bankrupt two of the major newspapers in Israel. Channel 10, which is the television station, is going to be closed soon because Bibi Netanyahu doesn't want to support it. So things, are really bad, in my point of view, for democracy in Israel. And uh, it, it, it's not, it's, it's not, we are on the verge of an abyss, in my point of view. In all terms, democracy, human rights, racism. So, it is important, but the audience is getting less and less exposed to this kind of uh, material or movies, because the, the, the places where it could be shown or could create the debates are scarcely there. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Yes, up here, Brad. Oh, hold on for a sec. We'll get the mic. He didn't see the film, and he's asking a question. He didn't watch Following up on this question about women, how, um, what is the role of women in the I mean, how do they use them? Are they double agents? I mean, how do they get employed in terms of getting information and resources, especially in light of the Palestinians? And, Role women have there. Look, she doesn't. She bet doesn't. Uh, well, from what best of my knowledge, doesn't operate operatives, Israeli operatives inside Palestinian. He he is the one that is like the CIA operatives who have his agent inside the territories. There is. I did a lot of well in the interview. It's a big big chunk of my my interviews because I am fascinated by this under spying world. You know. This was something that I liked and I loved, and all these things. How do you get into that? How do you do that? What? Also, I, I wanted to know, basically also for me, the film was very interesting from the personal point of view. How do you decide, do, how do you make those kind of decisions? How do you make a decision to kill someone? So how the movie starts? How do you make a decision? How do you live with yourself after that? It was very, very interesting for me to, to really go into the psychology of that. So, all of that, there is movement in the Shinbe. They are doing everything, but mostly we are a chauvinist uh, society, you know. And, and in the land of fire, although everybody says that uh, it, you know everything is uh, women, are, they put men mostly there. So in the land of fire, mostly in the Shibet, I mean. Yes. 
with the fantastic reflexive documentary, which should be seen in Norway so, and other countries too, obviously. Uh, but the bottom line is, it's a very bleak view of Islam that these men want to represent. And you have common author shows that you're very skeptical. So if I turn around, do you see any possible opening of a dialogue between Palestinians and, and the Israelis? I will ask you in what one of them said to me. Uh, because I have a very bleak uh, focus for what will happen in Israel. He said, listen, to solve a conflict which is so complicated, like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you need an outstanding leadership on both sides at the same time. And this is what makes it so difficult. You had Rabin in front of Arafat, it didn't work. And every time, now there is, I, in my point of view, the most convenient partner in the Palestinian Authority ever. Salem Fayyad, the Prime Minister, the Palestinian Prime Minister, fights terror, fights Hamas. He doesn't want terror. Abu Mazen says the same thing. And in front of him, regrettably, in my point of view, we have Netanyahu. So you have, two side, you have to have two sides at the same time. And even if we will have at the same time both sides, great leadership, it will be very, very difficult. If you ask me what I think should happen, I hope that Obama will be the president. I hope, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> This is what I hope. I hope that Obama will be the, president, the next president of the United States. I think that the international community should force a solution there. I don't think that the Israelis and the Palestinians are capable to solve the problem by themselves. This is what I think. But this is my point of view, my personal point of view, not something that I represent. I don't think that the Israeli and the Palestinian have in them now what needs to be done in order to solve that conflict. We have to evacuate settlements. The Palestinian has to agree not for the right of return of the refugees. They cannot do that by themselves. Every time that the peace process went close, the extremists from both sides won. They killed. They. Uh, this is what's going on. So I'm wondering, have you gotten any response from Palestinians or other Arabs, as we've shown in the film now, internationally? I had an amazing response from a Syrian couple in Tif who came to me and hugged me. She was very nice, she hugged me and with her husband. And she said, I wish there was something like that done in, in, in our country or uh, that something like that could have been done there. Palestinians saw the film and also they were very interested to see because it was hard for them. Because if there is an organization that is hated in the, in the, in the West Bank and Gaza, it's the Bukhabarat in Arabic, which means the Shinbet. Uh, they don't like them, so, but it was very important for them to see, especially what they said about the conflict. So, yeah, I, I hope more will come and see. Okay, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. I want to thank you for our